What's going on guys? So, kind of been wanting to redo some of my old right rod builds. Not completely, but the farm truck, it was built during a time when it didn't have a whole lot of subscribers. And it didn't get a whole lot of views. And honestly, it's actually one of my better platforms. Um, it has a lot of usable suspension movement. It's very nicely balanced and it was actually pretty quick. And it was very fun to drive and I haven't had electronics in it in well over a year, maybe two. And, uh, yeah, decided to make some changes here. So I've got all these new tires and wheels and stuff that's come out since Marcy Formal Drive. And I want to try some of this out. Um, a couple issues we'll talk about here in a minute. The main thing with this was the body. So I just used the model Modern Masters metal paint, iron oxide paint. And this is the 3D printed body I got from Shapeways, uh, M Designs, or M Customs. It's his design, and, uh pretty neat. It sits on here nicely, kind of locks in, it's held with magnets, but I got real lazy with that weathering, I guess you'd call it, and I just rusted the entire thing. It was kind of experimental, and I just did the iron paint, rusted it, we did some time-lapse stuff, it was kind of cool, and that was it. And it, it it's rusted up more over the years, but not, it doesn't look realistic. So, um, with the tank track rat rod, that body had been kind of a test piece for all my patina stuff, and it had been rusted completely before as well. And then luckily it had been painted underneath the rust. So I wanted to try some different stuff out. I'm uh, pretty happy with how it's come out. So what the goal is, we have the iron paint under there. We sanded the rust off of it basically, and then it's kind of metallic looking. And uh, the parts that show through, hopefully over time, will naturally rust. And maybe we'll make some of the paint peel up and stuff like that. <clears throat> so, the thing I did before, I just used regular spray paints. And, uh, thought we'd try something different. So I had this gallon of paint left over from my living room, as you saw earlier in the video. It is a Bear Paint, Bear Ultra. Uh, what do they call it? It's got a funny name. Allure. It's kind of a red, deep red that's not maroon, but... Um, the grill shell on this has been painted red and patinaed and looks fantastic. So, kind of trying to match that. I did one of these bodies with Shapeways for a giveaway. And I painted it red and it came out gorgeous. I loved it. I hated, I hate that. Every time I, I do something for a giveaway, like I did the RC four-wheel drive rat rod, I always miss it. <clears throat> always wish uh, I could have kept it for myself. But, I'm trying to mimic that a little bit. I learned a lot of stuff here about working with house paints. Um, it actually sands a lot easier. So the first time I painted it and went, went and wet sanded it, I used some 100 grit, which was a little fresher than the paper I usually use. And it sanded right down and we got white plastic showing through. So I was going to come back with iron paint again. And iron paint, I got a big bottle of it now and it's all separated and I need to mix it. And I just didn't have the patience the other night to do that. So just went ahead and painted it again with the brush paint with the red Allure house paint. And uh, went back with a little bit more, I think it was a 230, 220 grit that was worn out already. And uh, worked a lot better. So we got two coats of house paint on there. And um, still had some plastic come through the door hinges and things like that. But um, pretty happy with how that came out. So I haven't really got it on there yet. It's still drying. I did come back with the AK Rust Streaks, uh, my favorite product. That helped hide some of the edges that came through. It makes them look a little different, like they're just a rusty base coat, coat or something showing through. And um, put that on pretty thick, and I left it pretty thick this time. I didn't uh, wipe it as aggressively as I normally would. So it the the color and stuff looks pretty good. I'm I'm happy with that. And uh, the way the metal came through in places, the metal paint, it's going to look pretty cool. And I think eventually it's going to rust and it's going to look fantastic. Uh, I, the activator for that metal effects paint is very bad. It would probably stain the windows. Um, it would stain the red paint. So I don't want to spray that all over it in hopes that it will bring the rust out. I think what I'm going to do is after this video, I may let that body live outside for a week or so. Um, it's spring slash starts of summer here in Texas, so the humidity is up, and I think uh, some warm days out in the wet grass in the mornings and stuff might help bring some of that back out. 
and it's fine we don't have to worry about the body actually rusting away or anything so may uh, give that a shot um, I've got some electronics I'm back to robbing stuff out of every other car had to take this 1060 hobby wing and the radio out of the uh, TAO 3F that we did a couple videos ago and um, yeah just I can't afford enough electronics to keep all these things running at the same time <laughs> but um yeah got a lot of stuff in the works here and this thing I'm waiting on this waiting on this to dry um, let's talk about the tires and wheels now so what I'm wanting to do here these are RC 4 drive 19 vintage cruiser wheels and they just look awesome they that they have that artillery style look they no longer make them apparently I was looking for another set I have these on the front of the tank track rat rod and this is the only other two I have and they look good on here and I'm thinking about redoing the number three rat rod um, I'm looking to upgrade the electronics on that finally so that one's on the back burner for now but uh, I put them on here because of steering issues but I've got a big problem with those so these wheels mount with a they don't mount with a standard nut they have a basically like a spacer type nut it threads over the shaft and that looks cool it looks more scale but the problem is with this being this is a 12 millimeter hex that I've modified drilled out so it fits this solid front axle it's not a drive axle you can see the nut spinning and then we get to a point and it doesn't so under forward rolling forward movement it's going to lock up on us which would be great for burnouts but not great for actually running the thing and I've combated that on the other one I've got a 3d printed adapter in there with some bearings and stuff like that but I don't have any more of those things so I've got my modified 12 millimeter hex and some washers and all kinds of ghetto stuff that makes this work on the rat rods um, I could Loctite the snot out of it and let it dry just out far enough and hope that it holds but it, the wheel's going to move around it's going to catch that nut eventually and tighten it so what I'm thinking here I've got these different tires and wheels that I've put on the rear these are the Michelin super wides from RC four wheel drives these are 17 they are a very wide tire very scale on road tread and I've got them mounted on the RC four wheel drive 19 rally wheels these are the Chevy style rally wheels that come with the chrome rings um, I don't like the chrome ring look for this purpose but I've got them on the back here they look fantastic I think I like them on the front too so I've, I've got another set of them that came in I don't have any more of these wheels but uh, they look great on the number three and on this rat rod so I don't know yet how I'm gonna do all this but these will bolt with a standard lock nut on the front um, causes another problem though and I'll show you that let me mount them up the main problem with those up front is the width and it's gonna limit the steering quite a bit you can see we're already hitting the headlight and there are some issues with that too when the suspensions down the arm on the knuckle here hits that anyway but the suspension is never all the way down and it, you don't even notice it really while driving but it's gonna limit the steering more which is not bad because we do have a tiny little cheap six dollar micro servo in there that is horrible and barely has any throw and can barely turn the skinny tires so it probably barely turn these um, if I remember right the few times I did drive this truck it was more driven by throttle but it, it seemed very controllable but this wheel does fit on here perfectly I've got the nut tightened all the way down the bottom of the shaft it's lock nut so it's staying put we have very little slop on on here as opposed to these if I can get it to wobble this one well it's on there a lot better anyway and I like I, I like that look of the fat tires all around and this thing's kind of a bomber man it's we'll see here in a little bit we're gonna get it out and drive it but I don't really know what else to do I could add some more spacers in there buy us a little bit more steering um, I really don't want to lose the headlights the headlights were what started this build those are uh, commercial air nozzle tips for a giant three foot long air gun to blow stuff out <laughs> they look like jet engines they've got a neat thing on the back and those are to me a f-350 headlights shoved in them and I only had the two and one of them was bent and busted looking so that's what we went with but I don't know so I gotta do some brainstorming on that 
see if uh, maybe I could space that out just a little bit more because at this point the rear is still narrower than the front and even with the tire on there so I might be able to throw a couple more washers and we'll see what happens all right so this is a trick I did on a couple other rat rods these are Tamiya stock brass bushings they're the 5 by 114 by 3 I think I think the <laughs> ball bearing the ones that we replaced in by the kit and I've got boxes of them, you know, built to me a kits over the years. Um, they work out pretty well. Um, I've got those. One of those shoved onto there. This is a standard RC four-wheel drive 12 millimeter hex that has been drilled out to this diameter. And that allows us just enough space to tighten the nut all the way down into the nylon. So you can tighten it all the way and it won't spin. So you back it up just enough so it spins. And we still got the nylock on there. We still got enough steering. The servo is fully extending, so I think it's going to be about the same as we had. I don't know why I'm just digging the fat tire look. It, it it's sporty. <laughs> so I need the body to dry. That's the next thing. Um, it's still tacky, and we have to let it set overnight. And um, the way this works, I usually hook the electronics inside the body and then the battery, just kind of a free-for-all. We need to tie it to something <laughs> and uh, hope it stays in place while we drive and not pull the body off. Um, I really need to make some kind of mount for that, but I was waiting to do some kind of seat, which actually I don't think this one will fit in there. I have this seat that we did on the ramp truck. We might cut that down a little bit, see if we can... Uh, oh, I riveted it. Look at me. <laughs> I'm not trying to cut it down and see if we can stuff a battery in here and make it fit somehow. It may be way too massive for that. Um, I don't know if I have any more of this material for my seat cover. It would be cool if I did. I do. Oh, all right. Well, let's see what we can come up with for a battery slash bench seat.
All right, guys. So made some progress. We got a couple little issues to work out. Um, I like the tires and wheels. Um, I had one fall off there at the very beginning. These I've got boxes of old wheel nuts, and the nylon on these with the yellow or brown colored nylon was a little worn out more than the one with the black nylon. So I swapped that over. Wheel stayed on fine. Um, major issue: the body still won't stay put. I've got magnets on there. It's not holding. The front, the back, I got an easy fix for. Um, front, I haven't figured out yet. So we're gonna work on that next time. Another issue, the steering. Um, I've got a little dinky cheap servo in there and it's only held in with one screw. And it worked its way loose. So hit enough bumps and the entire servo would pivot. <clears throat> and then you could only steer one direction. See the servo just moved there. So now it's centered and the wheels are off. Um, the fix for that, I'm going to have to modify the mount, but I do have some goodies to fix that. Shout out to Reef and the gang. They uh, gave me one of these little Nitro 99s for rat rod purposes only, and I think we found the rat rod purpose we need. So, uh, yeah, 99 ounce of torque, all aluminum. Great looking little servo. I've got an aluminum mount for it. I don't know that it will work on this application, but we'll give it a try. And I also have an aluminum horn for it. Over here somewhere. Yeah. I've got the nice aluminum servo horn, so maybe we can work this out where we can get a little more steering. Even though we're still hitting the headlights, but it actually worked out kind of cool. When you turn full lock, tire hits this, stops spinning, kicks donuts. So it, it kind of kind of worked out. So I'm not too worried about the turning radius and stuff. Um, it's not quite as fast as I remember. And that could be, uh, these tires are just slightly shorter than the other ones, uh, the rears especially. So I don't know about that, but definitely need a servo upgrade. Um, I love the suspension on this thing. It has got so much bounce and so much movement. The rear is pretty stiff, the front's pretty soft, and it just looks cool bouncing down the gravel. Um, I just threw a little 1060 Hobby Wing in there. Uh, that's all I've got and just about everything. I tried to run my Helios 3000 3 cell and it didn't like that. It, it would go and then I think it was just too much power and it would kick off and it would immediately turn back on and it would kick off. So I took the opportunity to try one of these. I didn't have it fully charged yet. Um, <clears throat> I charged these up last night. But this is a little 1500 3 cell, a nice smaller compact package. And I uh, had no issues with the 1060 on that, so that may be the battery of choice. I also have a couple smaller batteries from Helios. I've got a little 2002 cell, which wouldn't be any problem for that ESC. <clears throat> but I do like that 3 cell power. But um, other than that, the battery mount. I made that bench seat. I didn't really get to incorporate a battery mount into it. I just set the battery in the seat, which it held fine. But it is bouncing around, it is weighed up high, and it is partially why the body will not stay magnetized to the chassis. So, definitely some things to work out still, but I'm digging the new look of it. Definitely liking the new look, the new patina. I, I'm excited. It was very humid out there when I was driving. So I may take that body off and just set it outside for a little bit. See if we can bring out some of that iron oxide paint. Um, it is not completely dry because it is so humid that the rust streaks are a little tacky still. So I have a little bit of rust on my fingers. <laughs> That's how it always goes though. <clears throat> but um, yeah, keep it scale guys. I'm gonna wrap this one up here and we'll do some more work on this one in the near future. But uh, see y'all in the next video. Get out there and have some fun.